what makes all these notorious cash grabs that fill Roblox so fun and addicting? Why are these games so popular? Well, we've been talking a lot about strategy and passion, and it's time that we dive into some specific examples that are taking over Roblox right now. And one of the biggest ones to look at are Steel A games. A lot of people think, oh, these games are just for young children and they just exploit them for cash. No, that's emotional thinking, that's moralizing, that's shaming devs for making what works. It's nonsense. These are just simple games that are well monetized. These games I personally find fun. It's the difference between playing Skyrim and playing a mobile game like Candy Crush on your phone. These are Candy Crush. Most people think that the only good games on Roblox are Skyrim, but most devs can't make Skyrim and most players don't care about Skyrim. What makes a Steel A game so popular? Well, what makes it popular is its simple, fun core loop, first of all. The primary loop in this game is purchasing cars and stealing cars from other players. That is the first part of the core loop. It's just the basic action that you take in game repeatedly. So you go and you buy cars, okay, buy, buy, and then you can go to other players' bases and try to steal. Thing is though, usually in these games, I find it hard to actually steal cars from people's bases. That is the point of the gate, but it makes it so that usually there isn't a lot of stealing going on. It's just farming at your own base and stacking cash. Yeah, so let's lock our base here. Collect, collect. So the secondary loop is selling your cars and getting better cars. That's the next thing you do after you have bought cars and stolen cars from other players. You sell your lower value cars and then you go and you buy better ones with the cash that you've earned from your other cars that it's generated. And this is the same thing across the board for any Steel A game. So you go and you purchase better cars. I just purchased something that I basically just sold. See, this is pointless. The people you can actually steal from have $100 cars. There's no point in this. Hey, buddy. Smack that guy. The gear in these games remind me of old Roblox games where gear was very common. Somebody's stealing my car. This is also part of the secondary loop is protecting your base. You keep repeating these actions over and over and it's enjoyable. Now the way that they add variation in the gameplay to this loop as it repeats is there are different cars. Every seal a game has different items that come out of the spawn. And the way that they shake up the gameplay is just by making the cars different. And they add in some visual variety. And this makes it feel like, oh yeah, I'm progressing. I'm getting better cars. Rather than it just being an endless loop of buying the same car over and over. So progression is very key to a core loop because players need to feel like they're going towards a goal rather than just endlessly spinning their wheel. That's why there's so many different cars in this game or so many different brain rots in Steal a Brain Rot. The tertiary loop, which is the more long-term goal in this game, is the rebirth system. So after you've reached enough cash, you rebirth and you get an amplifier on everything plus some new gear. Times 0.3x cash, 10 second longer lock on your base, right? You have to continuously lock your base and go back to it, which can be kind of annoying. So they let you upgrade that by getting a rebirth. Then there's 10% more power, smacking power on your hand, on your hand. And then you get an acceleration coil and a banana peel. These rebirths are the more long-term goal that you go for in this game. And it makes you better and better and better at all the main actions in the game. So it's very appealing for players, right? Because you're able to make more cash, and you're able to have a longer lock, go around stealing from others' bases longer without worrying about your own base getting stolen from, and you're able to get 10% more power, which allows you to, well, protect your base better. And a lot of these mechanics, you've seen them across Roblox for a long time. Simulators have been the main games that use Rebirth, but that's the basics, that's how it works. And the reason why you want to make simple games first, especially within trends, is look, these games, they are simple. So not only are they appealing to players, especially players on mobile or players who are young, which makes up the majority of the Roblox audience, it also is easier for you to produce as a dev. Now, most people will call this soulless cash grabbing, but really what it is, is it's just smart strategy first Roblox game development. Being a strategy first developer means not judging these games. It means learning from it. And it's doing exactly what I'm doing here. You look at the game, you play it, you have some fun in it, and you take notes on what they're doing right, rather than saying, oh, I hate this game. It's just so basic and simple and it doesn't have an open world map and it's using retro graphics. Oh, it's retro slop. 
No, I'm not sitting here judging and getting emotional about things. I'm sitting here being objective. This game has over 10,000 players or more online at any given time, which is very good. So I want to learn from that. I'm currently making a Steela game myself. I'm starting by making a template, so I'll let you know how that goes. And you can read my new Substack essay right now that talks about how to become a strategy-first Roblox developer and get out of the hobbyist hive mind that tries to program you to think these games are slop when really they are just what works and it is what the market desires. I, as a 19 year old man, enjoy this game. It's not just a game for little kids and it's just a different type of game. Most people don't recognize that these games are not low quality. They're just simple and they are different than what most passion projects are. Passion projects are not the only pure games on Roblox. These games can be made with creativity and love just the same, just on a smaller scale and a more realistic standard that new developers can reach rather than grinding in studio for five years on a complex dream game that probably will never get out like me years ago focusing on making my dream role play game making a massive open world role play like brookhaven before i was truly ready to finish it then jimmy games blew up and i learned the truth about development which is strategy first make simple games first. So go ahead and read that essay in the description. It is my best work yet on the strategy first mindset and the hobbyist mindset and the difference between the two, as well as how to adopt the proper mindset that allows you to excel in the field of Roblox game development rather than coping like most devs and people on Roblox who like to criticize these games. See you there.